In looking at skeletal muscle tissue, we know that the muscle cell is not referred to as a cell, but rather a muscle fiber. Each muscle fiber is wrapped in loose aerial or connective tissue that we refer to as endomysium. When we bundle these cells or fibers together, we produce a fascicle. A fascicle is held together by connective tissue that we refer to as perimysium. And then bundles of fascicles put together are what make up a muscle as we know it. And that is bound by connective tissue that is referred to as epimysium. And remember that all of this connective tissue runs the length of the muscle and blends together to form either a tendon or an aponeurosis. Now when we look at what's inside a skeletal muscle fiber, understand that each skeletal muscle fiber contains hundreds of myofibrils. And these myofibrils are cylindrical units of repeated patterns of actin and myosin. Within each myofibril, we have thousands of sarcomeres. A sarcomere is the functional contracting unit within a myofibril. The sarcomere goes from Z disc to Z disc. Where each Z disc is located, that is made up solely of actin and it zigzags as it connects together so that's where you get your z disc from the z the uh, zigzag then we have the dark a band formed by the overlapping actin and myosin remember that myosin is a thicker filament actin is a thin filament then we have the h zone in the center where you just have myosin only there's no actin there and then we have the m line in the middle so taking a look here, we can see the red myosin, the blue actin, and those proteins that hold the myosin and anchor them to the Z disc. Those little proteins there are referred to as titan. So let's take a look at what happens for skeletal muscle contraction in just a second. I wanted to review for you one last time. Here we have the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the terminal cisterna, the transverse tubule. Remember that the plasma membrane around the skeletal muscle fiber or myofiber deeps, um, deeps, <laughs> and dips down into the sarcoplasm and it circles around each myofibril and they call that a transverse tubule. And that's important because when electricity runs down the sarcolemma, it can transport down into the skeletal muscle fiber. All right, let's see what else we got here. Okay, I think we're ready to look at the events at the neuromuscular junction. So I'm gonna stop here and create a new video so it's not too long for uploading.